combinations and putting them together. Well, let's see what we get right here, whether I am will go for that Cassiopeia Azir ban strategy that most teams opt for, of course. SKT bans the LeBlanc as ever when Easy Hoon plays, and first off the board will be Callista for IM. We're talking about must ban champions against SKT on red. Rise Limbs is a must ban champion in the meta, although we noticed yesterday it was uh, coming through picks and bans. There's so many of those champions that are core to the winning that SKT does, like the Alistair. You have to feel like something will slip through and be available for SKT, a priority pick at first pick. Yeah, and of course, SKT just kind of bans around these champions that they don't really prioritize, that LeBlanc, that Gragas. And SKT really has a very solid sense of their identity, what they're going to play, what they're strong at, and they, they almost always just play to those strengths of the pick and ban. They don't get sucked into thinking that they have to play uh, Gragas or anything like that. They just play their own game and, and dictate the rules that way. Maokai, a bit of a surprise considering Marin's record on that champion. I think it's preparation to me that the team prepares very well. It feels like they know what works well for them and they know what works well against them. So they always have something prepared, even if it's a bit off meta. Question is, are they going to take Rumble or Alistair first here? It's interesting to me, Marin, obviously a wonderful Rumble player. It feels like Alistair's maybe the more important pick. It facilitates turret dives. It's good against turret diving. It's banned away, though. I think it's going to be the Rumble first, because otherwise, why would they ban Maokai here? Uh, they could take the Rek'Sai, I suppose, but still a lot of junglers on the board. Although Maokai had previously been seen as a more 50-50 matchup against the Rumble, it's definitely been dominating Rumbles in recent play. Rek'Sai is going to be the first pick. Echo looms as a potential pick for both teams, but Easy Hoon hasn't showed it in his solo queue match history. Notably, though, Monte Cristo, he has been playing the victim. Yeah, and again, that's not too much of a surprise given Easy Hoon's play style that sure. he would like that champion. Uh, he does do well on poking and uh, mages with limited mobility that he can play from the back line. But still, I mean, is it going to be up to the level of Faker's Victor? Probably not. I mean, Victor is definitely one of Faker's best champions at the moment. I am just considering a couple of picks. We're going to wait to see if the Echo's actually locked in. I'd be surprised to see it locked in with the Evelyn, because then you'd show that it isn't a flex pick. It has loomed as potentially top jungle and mid, depending on which scene you're watching. Sivir is available. Uh, IM's last two games in a row were victories on Sivir. Priority for Sivir, a common thing in, the, in Champions this season. Yeah, it's just been rising in terms of that draft stock because of what it can do with the engage. And Sivir Sejuani, they're setting up for a big engage already. They should know that the Rumble is going to come out for IM if they don't take it right now. I'd be surprised to see SKT not start to lock in very strong lanes. You already see that Sejuani jungles picked up very early rotation. This is a champion that you can try and push up your lane, whether it's mid or top, and help your jungler to invade the Sejuani and hold her down. Do not give her the free farm to level six potential that the Sejuani is always looking for. The Rumble, as you mentioned, is locked in, and also the Corky is the answer to the Sivir. Yeah, that's not really an answer to the Sivir, though. Most Korean players don't like playing Corky into Sivir when they can avoid it. The Rumble, no surprise there, as uh, that, that would set up for a very IM composition in terms of that big mid-game AOE damage that sometimes they like to go after. And, Mar is just such a comfort pick on that, and they're actually going to grab the Varus right now early on. This is a little bit unusual. You can see they've got the Sejuani and Janna, so potentially you could be using the Glacial Prison for Peel, because they've got, of course, plenty of Peel coming through from the Janna. It's the semblances of some sort of poke comp, although it doesn't really have an identity till the fifth pick is locked in to really round it out. I wonder what they could be going in the top lane right now. I mean, they could definitely kite with Vladimir as well if Apple wants to return to that selection, but he's going to get pushed in very hard early on. They feel comfortable that they're going to be able to disengage, and why not? Sivir, Sejuani, they actually kind of turned this comp on its head. It looked like going to be a hard engage comp, but instead it's a kiting comp when we, we actually see the Janna and the Varus. So that peel and movement going to be used a little bit differently than normal, and that's a smart lock in. Take the Annie right now, try and get onto the Varus. They have long range engage. I think the Azir is the better pickup here compared to the Cassiopeia. Azir, 3 0, undefeated on Azir is Easy Hoon. He's definitely shown excellent mechanics on that champion to the point where perhaps even considered a better Azir player than Faker. And there's not many players or champions that you can really put that sentence I, together with. I do think Easy Hoon is better Azir player than Faker. Just what we've seen, Easy Hoon's Azir mechanics are pretty magnificent. 
So, what is this last pick going to be? How are they going to complete this kite cop? They're actually just trolling Faker right now. The, for those of you who don't know, the Gangplank Galio uh, and the Garen are the first three champions alphabetically in the Korean client, and Faker always bans those three champions in solo queue. Uh, that's how people know if you're on the enemy team that you're playing Faker in solo queue, is that if he's first, if he's banning, those are, he just leaves everything good up to play against it. Wow. And it will be the Galio for the kite. Interesting. Okay, the last time we saw Galio was actually over in the LPL. Yep. Akon was playing that in he the top lane. He does have that weird Galio fetish from time to time. The pocket Galio. We also saw Galio mid from EDG Pawn played it infamously in a loss in against Team World Elite in the uh, quarterfinals of the LPL playoffs. So there has been a bit of Galio play. There been some Galio changes being mooted for future patches. But see it locked in here is interesting. You played it. Not you, fun. sorry, sorry. You, that's correct. Who casted LPL Papa Smithy? Oh, it's all a Get blur, back. Monty. There was a lot of those games. <laughs> you played it in the mid lane. I got the right match, but uh, the wrong mid laner. So top lane Galio. Again, Acorn, the only person who's been playing it in the top lane. It's going to be wave clear for days. Very defensive lane against the Rumble, but you do have a lot of pushing. Of course, your Q has about 100 base at level 1. You can just spam spells from range. Maybe just trying to wave clear and relieve some pressure from the Sejuani. Yeah, Galio actually does have a lot of control over where the wave in his lane. You exactly. can really make a lot of decisions. I mean, the problems with Galio are evident. You can get knocked out of that ultimate pretty easily, and he is very ult dependent in the late game. Still a bit of a lane bully, especially against a melee champion like Rumble. And, I mean, honestly, works pretty well with their composition. That's more speed, great kiting, great counter engage. So we'll see how this works. It's fun that he's good at kiting, despite the fact that, of course, his primary identity is an engage mage. He's known for the flash ult. So even though you say he's ult reliant to me, he's even more flash reliant than he is ult reliant. If he doesn't have that reposition, his team fight impact, minimal. All right, well, Galio in the top lane. Let's get into it. fans as loud and loyal as ever. Korean fans in full voice, despite it being very early. It's just past midday here in Korea in the Yongsan Esports Stadium. Galio top. The one thing you can say, Galio kind of shared an identity with Rammus. Rammus was the armor stacking anti-AD champion. Galio always had that identity of dealing with mages. Rumble, Azir, and of course, Corky doing primarily magic damage. Hell, Wolf is going to be doing plenty of magic damage himself. The Bulwark, you know, his W is going to be giving a lot of free stats, and in general, and itemizing passive. against this particular team is going to give him damage, which probably won't necessarily be relevant for Burst, but it's certainly going to be relevant for Wave Clear this game. Yeah, I, very interesting pick, and I, you know, normally I wouldn't really like this Galio, and like you said, he is flash reliant for engage, but he does hell, he doesn't have to engage this game. They have a Sejuani if they need to, but for the most part, they're just going to be wanting kiting, wanting to kite anyway, so. SK Telecom is going to have to play this very cautiously lest they enter the range of that idol of Durand, his ultimate, and get caught out. So really fascinating composition from IM. I think it, I really like it. I think it'll, it, it will work, especially with this very AP heavy composition that SK Telecom is running. And maybe it's just evolving as a good lane matchup against Rumble, which since so much Rumble priority been basically a first or second rotation pick the last three weeks or so, despite seeing no direct changes. In lane, you can expect it to be very even, but with Bang being on your screen in the top lane, the lane swap has been initiated by SKT. Right, look where our Wolf is already. They have a ward at the red buff right now. Wolf should have a, some suspicion about where the Sejuani is. It won't be a buff start. Wolf trying to keep some eyes on right here. He's going to see Apple go back and start double jungling. And oh, they don't know Wolf's there. Now they see him. Tucson already super, super low in the jungle. Suddenly, taking a red buff looms as a risk. Wolf good good reaction. Look how fast Ignar is getting to that red buff to help him out. And, you know, this is one of those things that we've seen. This is an evolution on the lane swap that Ignar would be on that side of the map so early because a lot of the junglers are being punished for starting at the, at the camp early on without going for the buff first. In that case, Wolf was ready to punish the buff first start as well. So some interesting mind games, but Ignar shows up, and that's going to prevent any kind of real play Awkwardly on the lane. 
in a 1v2 situation himself right now as the support, given that Apple continued the jungle follow. But there's really no danger, right? No. Is True. the thing, is that you know where the rumble is now, you don't really care where the jungler is, but you have an idea uh, that he probably also started weak side in this scenario. And the Annie was in the top lane, so it's very safe for Marin to go into lane, and there's no risk to taking some of this experience which may have gone unused otherwise, actually, during the jungle follow. So I really like what we're seeing from Incredible Miracle. And they're trying something different. That's probably the most exciting thing, is they're not sticking with the tried and true. It is still double AD, which they've had some success on, but throwing in the Galio that works well in an engaged sense with its dive buddy, Sejuani, and in the kite, like you mentioned. So they gave Galio the blue buff, actually, on that double jungle. So now Galio just going to be able to pretty much push out this lane at his leisure. Getting a lot of mana to start farming underneath the turret. Sejuani just, I'll assume this was an intentional blue buff. No surrender. I was watching it. It was hard to tell. Yeah. I, I guess he wouldn't have opted into an auto attack if he didn't want to try and take it. So, look, he has high mana cost, so this will allow him to disregard those for the early phase before he picks up the Chalice, which is going to do so many different things for him in this game. Well, and he's even levels with Bang right now, and, and Galli is just going to have that better poke. Um, I mean, he is very strong in that regard, for sure. His trading definitely going to be nice. Bang doing a good job of dodging some of those abilities. Bang himself. Watching Wolf in the bottom lane. Camping a bush. Keeping his options open. There's a lot of kill pressure on a rumble lane in a 1v1, or what was looming as a 2v1. Ignar hasn't been spotted, and we might see a 2v2 trade. Yeah, uh, here we go. Looks like the overheat. W over the double stun. Marin still going in. He's got his flame spitter on. Exhaust is utilized. Two cents here. Teleport coming through for Apple. And that is going to be a smite. Two cent forces the flash. Marin goes down for that first blood. They're not going to be able to pursue on Wolf. A really nice teleport coming through from Apple. Good mechanics. I am is kind of different from some of those bottom teams like Spenner who struggle with the teleport plays. The communication was clear. Everyone committed at the same time and they pick up first blood. Yeah, I am. Very intriguing start to this game. Not really too much loss there for Rumble because he's going to be able to catch that wave with his teleport. And in the meantime, Corky is denying a substantial amount of creeps in the top lane. Apple didn't get the kill either. That went over the roar. Can't even pick up a chalice that would really... That would be very helpful. Exactly. That would basically do the same thing as the blue buff. Give him that infinite laning presence. But we'll have to struggle for at least a couple more minutes before that item can be completed. He lost out on about two waves of CS as well. He's level four. In terms of experience, yes, he's more than half a level behind Marin. We're not sure whether it was worth it. They committed so many members for a single kill. No opportunity to pick up the dragon. I guess on balance, you have to say no. Well, about a 200 gold advantage off of that first blood. So very interesting. It, it's probably going to end up mostly being a wash right here. So SK Telecom not too far behind. As a result, they did use a couple summoners from Wolf, though, to try and enable that gank. And looked promising at first, but Tucson was there. They had a good read on the play. And Apple was prepped with that TB. Apple now going for a deep ward. And he is seen by Bengi. Bengi being a little cute there in the jungle. We'll see if he's actually going to come out here and make a play. He may just come through the tri brush and wrap around once he's in lane. Interesting tactic from Bengi, just keeping eyes on the opponent. He knows he hasn't been spotted. There's actually a pink ward in the brush behind. This is some predator level stuff coming through from Bengi. Bengi's a very smart jungler. Cerebral is the word I'd use. So he comes into Apple. Do they have enough damage to take down this Galio, the answer to that question is usually no. I mean, it sent. is the, the bulwark, so it does make it quite hard to go ahead and take that out. But Bengi getting a little damage done right there, and Apple out of pots right now. Doesn't have a teleport to potentially go back and pick up the Chalice. So kind of stuck in lane. One thing I wanted to mention, Monty, so the first blood went on to Siva, picked up a very early pick a uh, very early BF side. It would have been pickaxe and some pots against the Sheen. The BF sword and what is already a pretty good laning matchup for Siva gives her a lot of lane control options. So if she's the big benefactor, the bot lane should be the source of uh, happiness if you're I am. Well, they switched back, however. So notice what SK d did is that when Corky starts to get the natural advantage in the lane matchup is when he hits level six and can really start sure. spamming those rockets against the Siva. And at the same time, Marin died, but Marin had that that experience advantage 
They send him up there, Marin hits six first. They get a gank off, which is now gonna force Apple back and put him in a pretty bad situation. May lose another wave into the tower. Marin just gonna go ahead and push that right back in. So SK Telecom, I think, doing a good job of managing who was in which lane, given what had already happened in the game. Some smart assignments to each lane going down already. Tucson's doing something that we've seen become pretty common. A lot of junglers have actually been skipping, rushing the Cinderhawk and picking out the Sidestone. When you're Sejuani and you're not really looking to be an impact in early skirmishes, outside of perhaps your Glacial Prison, picking out the Sidestone to just relieve pressure off your lanes. He's got some green wards to go along with the Sidestone as well. Has some health scaling, so it gives him some semblance of damage, but more looking to relieve pressure from Bengi than necessarily impact the skirmish. Uh, it's also a big factor because of the nerfs to Cinder Hulk coming in, make that less of a worry. Just a ward going down from Bengi right there. They're checking out the blue buff. They want to chase Bengi away. They do not want it to be stolen away from Varus. He has the high mana cost. It doesn't have much weight. Oh, clear. Bang gets it. And it's massive, because as I was just about to say, suddenly much harder to spam out the Qs to try and control the wave against Azir. Gonna have less options in the mid. Has to back now. Has about 200 mana. And that's also bad news for Roar, who got that BF sword, and now he has to deal with a blue buff Corky in the lane. Uh, Tucson didn't have his smite up at the time to actually go after it and secure that buff if necessary. That's uh, it's a pretty nice steal there for SKT early on. You thought that Mara might be sad about the blue buff Galia. Blue buff Corky just as annoying. <laughs> Oh, wow, Frozen actually getting soloed by Easy Hoon right there. No mana left. There's a Sand Soldier going in. How far do they want to pursue this? Jana's in from the side. There's the Glacial Prison thrown down to stop Bengi in his tracks. And that's going to be it. But Easy Hoon making Frozen take the long way around right there, just using that ultimate to shove him right back in. Got his flash as well. And shades of Easy Hoon against Kuro in the finals of Champions last season. The solo kills were the big factor against the coup targets. Didn't quite pull it off there, but a lot blown from Frozen. Ignar taking a little bit of burst there from Wolf as well. Rocket's getting spell shielded, but Bang has unlimited rockets right now. So you can just keep spamming him out and wear down Roar over time, who is running out of mana, being able to clear that wave so convincingly. This makes it very hard for Roar to actually recall. A lot of good siege on SKT, Monty, but you were talking about unlimited, and one thing that IM has in unlimited capacity is wave clear. Galio, yep. Siva, even Varus, the three of them have so much long-range wave clear that if SKT try to play the objective game, they're going to have to really choose their opportunities because they're going to be limited windows given just how much wave clear we're talking about. Well, same thing can be said for SKT. Even though both teams have good siege, the, the ability to turtle is pretty excellent for both sides. So only most of this game going to be coming down to how well these teams fight around Dragon and Baron as opposed to straight up five man sieging a series of turrets. And I guess we should return to one of our pre-match talking points, prepping waves in the late game. IM have been noticeably poor at trying to set up any sort of side wave push. SKT, it's one of their strong, one of their strengths. So given that both teams are so even in the turtling uh, game, you have to think that that macro level strategy will be the ace in the hole for SKT in the late game. Yeah, absolutely. Because that just allows them to dictate the timing and the the, uh, the placement of those fights as well, so. Just to dictate in general. Yeah, indeed. All right, well, back to this quiet early game. Teleport's back up. Dragon, not yet actually grabbed in this game. So no real contest around that objective so far. Apple back once again in the top side. Going for that Grail. Gotta say, when it comes to top laners teleporting into Impact a Dragon fight, usually you never go past a rumble, but Gallia has to be respected on a very similar level. You can see why I am prioritized the early round Janna, just to stop that being one of the more regular ways of disengaging the, the Gallio ultimate. In terms of interrupts, I mean, the unburrow from a Bengi could be a big factor, but if the Unburrow has ever gone through, they do not have a lot of interrupts left to SKT. Uh, here we go again, Easy Hoon gets the ult off Frozen, gets his off as well, but Apple's gonna teleport into the mid lane right now. Tucson running around in a circle, he's gonna get some CC down on Amar and Bengi. The equalizer goes down, Monsoon can't quite save Tucson, and that is two kills as Apple will fall towards the end of that, that fight also. Easy Hoon with another really good setup, and that's the big story here. Easy Hoon has just been bullying Frozen. 
Frozen still trying to stack that tier. He's not in a power spike yet, and he has had his turret, turret massively chipped this game. And Easy Hoon lanes Azir like no other. He shows aggression in a champion that's mostly been known for wave clear. SKT going to parlay this into the first dragon in full vision of I am. But what are they to do? Wow. Well, doing that with Frozen's flash down, there's not a lot of counterplay. If you want to walk up, Azir has that opportunity just to get behind you and shove you back into the rest of the team. Second high, time's the charm for Easy Hoon right there. And wow, that was a uh, surprising turnaround. But Easy Hoon, really the linchpin for SKT this game. They get a tower off of that. They get a dragon off of that. They get a red buff. SK Telecom just devouring this game. And look at that. The Azir sec mechanics, Easy. beautiful. My jeez, Easy Hoon is just so perfect on this champion. Watching the extended uh, uh, trading coming through. The unburrow was kept up right till Gallia was about to proc his ultimate, so instantly interrupted. They fight around the other threats, pick up two kills, pick up an objective, and suddenly, out of nowhere, 1600 is the gold lead for SKT. Yeah, pretty significant. Marin gonna have to back off this turret right now. Getting a little bit scared of the possibility of Tucson as well. He should be all alone on that side of the map, and those deep boards giving him enough information. They're gonna try and take away the blue buff as well. Not Man, blazing. Easy Hoon's Azir mechanic. I don't think I have seen a better Azir player, honestly. Just the fluidity of, that he can execute some of these combos, the way he can bend with the Sand Soldiers, going over walls is just spectacular. And I think it's apt that we call the uh, Azir engage they showed put off the Azir set, because much like Insect kind of monopolized all the early popularity of the strength of Lee Sin, understanding that Azir can be this aggressive lane as Frozen actually takes the Tibbers but will live because his cleanse is up. But it's an identity of Azir that we don't see very often outside of uh, Easy Hoon. Yeah, and now still some scrapping going in the jungle. Two sins coming around for another stun from Annie. Bang, looking to follow up here. There are some Sand Soldiers. They have to pop the Chain of Corruption just to stop SKT's advance. Apple looks for a flank, but he's going to get shot by the Azir turret. And off screen, I believe there was a duel between Bang and Raw. Bang taking down the Sivir as well. Things going from bad to worse for I am. Wow, SK Telecom though, just taking advantage of every little thing right here. That one fight in the mid lane with the two kills was turned into just so many objectives. And SK Telecom just continuing to play this incredibly dominant controlling style where if you make a mistake, they just eat half the map right up, right then. And look, they seem to be unique in their ability to play the early game. So why don't we try and dissect how this, what their actual win conditions were, what they were actually looking to Because remember the first 10 minutes, not much was happening. The teleport play came through from IM to pick them up first blood. But to me, the most notable thing about SKT's early game is that their first plan, their big plan seemed to be monopolize the enemy blue buff, ensure that Varus never got it and could never get his tier charging or control the mid lane wave against uh, Azir. And there we go, Roar just trying to take the blue buff. Speaking of that blue buff right now and the burst from the Sheen, that's enough to finish off Roar. Trinity Force actually was completed for that duel and that's why you saw basically 600 health evaporate between the Phosphorus Bomb and the Auto. Wow, so this game just absolutely controlled by SKT, but I think you're right. When they're going for that early, Fro Frozen, all he had was a tear and a pickaxe. He's not in any kind of shape right now to actually fight in that mid lane. And no, he already had his flash burned, and this is SKT once again looking at what summoners are on cooldown, looking at what plays can be the, made on the map, and then striking at that moment of weakness. And not only that, but having players that can be so dominant on certain champions like Easy Hoon is. And you take away the blue buff from Varus, what options does he really have against the Azir? He can't walk up to auto because the threat of the Azir sec is palpable. Already seen it twice this game. Can't even spam out the wave clear as he'd want to and control the wave because blue buff has been taken away twice. First by Galio and then twice by SKT. Hasn't seen a blue buff this game. And his options in mid, it just plays into Easy Hoon, just dominating Frozen. Yeah, and you just can't, you have to play back in that situation, I think, if you're IM. And you've got this Varus, you just need to stay under the turret right then, try and get your turret to take as little damage as possible and make more plays with your support and jungler as opposed to putting yourself in danger of getting knocked back with that Emperor's Divide just to farm. I think you just have this kind of split identity though, Monte Cristo. Remember, you have a Sejuani dungle. You don't have the strong skirmisher early like the Rek'Sai. Oh, Flash from Wolf. Wolf. That was clean. Spoke for itself. <laughs> 
Apple finding himself all alone in that jungle with a Bengi oh. and a Marin on him. And there's the equalizer going down. Level 11 already hit. Apple just burned to a crisp going through that bottleneck. Tried to flash over the fattest part of the wall and was not able to. Bit yucky there as they're going to keep pushing in mid. Yes. Not really much they can do right now. Easy Hoon just going to blow through that tower with both solo laners dead. Has a lot of options and to use his Sand Soldiers right on the turret itself. And now SK Telecom coming out to a 7K gold lead. And what's amazing about this, only five kills. Their finger has been on the pulse from the early game. Just contesting that blue buff then and winning that engage in mid. And ever since they won, what was a fairly even engage, interrupting the Galio ultimate and just picking up those two kills. They've taken two turrets in the mid lane. They've monopolized the enemy blue buff. They have uh, wards all over the blue side jungle. Raw's caught out, but Bengi doesn't really have any friends to do damage, so has to back away. Well, Bengi scared the R out of him, so that's good at the very least. Sivir does shout when she's scared, <laughs> doesn't she? Also when she's happy. How do you know Sivir's happy? I don't know. She seems bloodthirsty. She's a warrior princess, isn't she? She's basically Xena. She, that's true. She is basically Xena, so we can we can trust that she takes joy in the killing of her enemies, I suppose. The burst is there, but not quite onto Wolf again. Just indicative. The CS, we didn't even talk about it in mid, but we might actually see an engage. Bengi is on to twos, and they're free hitting twos, and not really an engage. This is four people wailing on the piggy lady. <laughs> oh, man. It's what? about 50 CS advantage for Azir in mid, and that's just been the consistent pressure and the denial of the blue. Yeah, we're not even counting out that turret gold that Ezian was able to pick up. Roar just getting soloed by Mar and flash use on the side. Holy cow. Marin with the bold plays while his team is doing that dragon. Easy Hoon now moving forward, gets knocked up, gets hit by the Zephyr, but he's going to be okay. So, Monty, we see a lot of Azir and Rumble in Champions. Marin takes over games on Rumble just like Easy Hoon does on the Azir. We've seen him build Death Cap. We know his aggression. He looks for the sort of kills, whereas most other Rumbles, they're just happy to be the equalizer bot in team fights. Yeah, uh, he definitely does have that capacity to make these 1v1 plays. And you know, it's not surprising, Marin is a player. You know, he came up, when he first came onto the scene as a pro player, everyone just banned his Rumble. He was known as the Rumble God. Him and Chunju, Acorn, were known as the Rumble Gods in solo queue. And Marin, he, in previous years, I will say that while his Rumble was threatening, it wasn't up to the level where it's at now, where he really, really knows those limits is how far he can go in terms of his 1v1 plays like we saw right there. And excitement in Korea for Marin's debut was similar to that, reminiscent of that of Faker's debut. People were saying this is the carry top, this is the one who's going to make Rome plays. And this was in a meta when Rome plays were much less common from the top lane. It took him a long time to settle and he wasn't the Marin we see today, two years ago or 18 no. months ago when he debuted. But I just love the fact that he'll play those meta champions, but he'll throw in damage. He'll have the mindset of a killer. And while that might sound like something that should get you to call the police, in League of Legends, <laughs> that's unique for a top laner. The mindset of a killer is what we look for in a pro gamer. It's true. Well, the Void Staff as well, just because this matchup versus... Uh, oh, Beggy actually getting caught out. Chain of Corruption. There's a nice equalizer, but it's not going to be enough to actually take someone out right there. Bengi invading a little bit too deep. Not how you, sure how you get caught like that with Rek'Sai. Well, you see what happens is you have your AD carry pushing bot, Rumble was pushing top, and you solo invade the jungle. Someone, something had to give. And you're playing Rek'Sai with Tremor Sense, so you can see there are five people in that topside jungle, and you still walk into the red buff. You lock spinning. your screen on the red buff <laughs> that you're going to steal away. No need to care about these other people. That's right. Why use a passive? You don't even need it right now. Absolutely. You're 10k ahead. Apple going to try and solo right now. There's the idol going down. Marin, they know he doesn't have Equalizer. Tucson coming in. They want to get this kill. There's the Glacial Prison. Marin trying to get out of there. Flame spitting uselessly. And will he actually get out? No mana really on this Galio. He overheats. The shield is there. And the turnaround. Apple gets stuck and actually reversed by Bengi. Wolf with the big flash Tibbers, and now Monsoon not going to be enough to take out Easy Hoon. Easy Hoon knocked up, so they will escape, maybe. Rosa trying to zone. You can see Corky and Sivir dueling on the map, also on the mini-map, but LZM just going to be chased out. They want to keep banging this position where he's way ahead of Raw and pushing in. SKT 
Marin actually lived on just a sliver of health. As the scrap shield came up, he was on maybe 100 health after the lice. The last Q came through from uh, the Galio, but in the end it doesn't matter as Bang. Raw just can't do much there. There's really nothing now. Should be a very uncontested Baron here for SK Telecom. Tucson. Well, maybe he'll look to come in, but Bengi going to run some interference. Who needs that smite in the pit anyway? Chases him off, gets the smite down. That's it. Clean Baron for SK Telecom. And, man, I mean... This game escalated pretty quickly. It's, it's just amazing to me. We look at SKT these past couple weeks compared to the Yi CJ game, too. I mean, that game in particular escalated so fast. And that was off of just CJ getting delayed at a blue buff, and SK Telecom managed to snowball that into ganking mid multiple times, diving them under the tower. SKT's sense of how to control the map and punish opponents right now is breathtaking. It's that understanding of what do we do well? What does this enemy team need to do to buy time or to get into their power spikes, and how do we counter that? It was contesting the blue that opened up every single advantage that SKT had been put out to the extent well I don't know if Frozen still picked up a blue this game. Yeah, and like I said, we saw the same thing last week against CJ, a team that was undefeated before their encounter with T1. And now with this Baron, Bengi just going to slowly push in the way, but man, SKT is just playing with an unreal level of control these days. It's been these games against lower opponents that actually slipped up. They've lost a game to Samsung, they lost a game to Anarchy. Both teams that are below IM in the rankings. We thought, okay, with Easy Hoon the lineup, there's always the potential that the finger's off the pulse, but that has not been the case whatsoever. Well, this is SKT's last game of the first, well, it's not the last game of the first round, Robin. It will be next week, but I mean, they are primed now to go. 9-0 on the season, really. Or on the half, I should say, the first round, Robin. Marin just going to slowly push in that top side. No one who could really, uh, actually, Tusa going to try to engage. Glacial Prison will airball. Now the TP canceled by Marin, actually, in that top side. Instead, decides to go for this tier two turret instead. Easy Hoon on pushing duty in the mid lane. And they'll be able to set up a nice siege with the Azir passive once it comes around. All these minion waves are going to be pushed up. At minimum, they can pick up an uncontested dragon because all the minion waves are going to be pushing in so oh. aggressive. Chain of Corruptions misses. A lot of failed engages here for SKT, and LZIM's in that unfortunate position of needing to engage with the composition that they were really hoping to be engaged in onto, and just kite it out. But when these towers are going down, they have to do something. And you know, honestly, I do like IM's composition, but SK Telecom is clearly a vastly superior team. Let's take a step back. They have broken the base twice over against triple wave clear champions. Marin's getting a bit cute looking for an engage. Yeah, their Apple already on the front side, just blown up by Bang. Marin takes a bit of a tour under the turrets, and he'll pay for that with his life. Easy Hoon and the rest still focusing down that inhibitor. They get it in the end, creating some zones with the Sand Soldiers, and they'll just back off after losing Marin. And I am can't even start to clear the minions that are crashing onto that inhibitor. There's a re-engage. Oh. Bang takes out Tucson. Actually, Easy Hoon picks up the kill credit. The minions might actually take down this inhibitor in the top side as well. It's crazy. They've broken the base at 25 minutes against Galio, Varus, and Siva, but that's the power of Baron buff and just smart split pushing and use of resources. Yeah, even though this Varus has managed to get into a point where he has that Manamune, still no Muramana yet at 26 minutes. That's actually huge. That should have been done three minutes ago. And of course, what's the big reason for that, Monty? No blue buff. No blue buff, and also just not enough time being able to be in lane and farming. Look at that CS difference. Varus just hasn't been able to get very many abilities off honestly over the course of this game and just remember that it's all about the Q that's how you charge up the uh, mana moon if you're Varus it was all facilitated by changing the cooldown from after the arrow came out rather than at the start of the charge so because it's the start of the charge you do see uh, the potential for mid Varus but without the blue it's about 130 I think it has over a hundred mana cost his mana pool is actually very shallow he needs to uh, build up that tier, not just for the mirror mana, but just for the flat mana. And without blue buff, it's just not a viable way to get through the laning phase. Yeah, I just can't believe how late that mirror mana is in this particular game. 
Wish our observer would hover over. I'm guessing it's probably at the 650 range, but... Yeah, it should be very close right now. Even with the blue buff delays, this is pretty extreme to have it nearly five minutes late now. But he has 226 CS. It's not like he's been denied from minions. He just literally can't charge it up know. fast enough. I don't know, Papa. It's 28 minutes, 226 compared to Easy Hoots right now is not looking particularly good. They're still trying to defend this inhibitor in the top side. And that'll be some poke going down. Marin just trying to keep those minion waves nice up and tight next to the Nexus turrets. And although this is a very nice kite comp when you're playing the objective game, in this situation it's only engaged. And will we see, in fact, the engage is from Easy Hoon. And the there's the equalizer, just heard it in right there. Bang with the rockets around the side. Easy Hoon gets the kill on Galio, but what a setup right there. Basically just corralling everybody in with the equalizer for the quick kill. The super minions come through. SKT, bang a wolf are pretty low. They actually use the heal just for a bit of extra health. They want to end the game now. Do. They keep pushing forward. Roar easily poked off the Nexus. Marin and Easy Hoon just providing that zone presence around the side, trying to keep people in the fountain. This is definitely a you shall not pass situation. <laughs> I am prison in their own fountain. <sighs> Purgatory, it feels like, in this particular <laughs> game. Uh, well, there's the last inhibitor. SKT really on a roll right now, still under 30 minutes into this one. Mermont is done. Hooray! Hooray! <laughs> he's got, look, he's got his item built. He has all the arm penetration completed. It's just, it's a moot point. They need to team fight, but they're 15,000 gold behind. This comp really just has to go in. It's got Galio Flash Ultimate, Sejuani with the Glacial Prison. If you were playing the objective play in an even game, kiting backwards is a very realistic option, but, but yeah, no none of those now. factors mean <laughs> anything exactly. That's the thing, is that it's not like they've been comprehensively outpicked. They've just been outplayed. Yeah. Oh, my. Goodbye, Ignar. Oh, actually gets hot, hit by the Chain of Corruption right there. There's an Equalizer, but Frozen going to get dunked by the wolf bang combination on top of that equalizer. Thought they might be able to make a play right there to follow up, but they were wrong, and now... Two waves of super minions gonna crash in. Yeah, that's gonna be it. SK Telecom just looking absolutely stellar this game. What a performance, what a closure to this game, even though I am. Had some shots, bang, just gonna pop the QSS right there, no Really harm coming from the Glacial Prison, and that's it, focused out onto the Nexus. Apple ults, but no one gets into the fountain. And that's GG, SK Telecom goes up 1-0. Very one-sided 30-minute game, but for 10 minutes it was fairly even until it felt like SKT turned on the style. They decided, okay, fighting at blue buff is our win condition. Parlayed that into a nice skirmish in mid, and never looked back. Yeah, very impressive, just the control too, and so much of that was based around Easy Hoon's a zero performance, and the fact that he managed to win lane so hard, as well as get so much of that turret HP down early, and they made the right plays around that Varus. And you know, Papa, this is one of the reasons why I'm not the biggest fan of the mid lane Varus, because if you start to get behind, there's nothing you can do. Varus with Sejuani, especially no jungle presence, they were made to pay. The objectives, they may have been able to put a real a real run together. And this is something about IM is they are creative in the pick and ban. We've seen them try and run some some fast pushing comps. They just can't execute it. But we expected that execution to be towards the end of the game, Monte Cristo, when perhaps some of their macro level decisions fell through. SKT took this game very assertively very early, which is a worry if you're an IM fan. But just to recap the bands that have come through so far, Azia and Rise banned out by IM, so that Azia certainly not going to come through from Easy Hoon this time. LeBlanc, Callista, the first two bands from SKT. Yeah, no surprise there so far. I am, I guess, not wanting to play that Rise in the top lane. A bit interesting there. And now the Annie, they looking for a little bit less hard engage. Will they go for another kiting composition? Maokai removed from the pool. So I imagine that SKT is just going to first pick Rumble if they get it on their side. Alistair available also. And so is Gragas. SKT is going to get some good stuff here. Bengi has played the Gragas this season. It's normally a Tom champion, but is 1-0 on this season. Of course, very small sample size. Where do you go then? Gragas available. Yep, it's the one locked in. How about yourself? Gragas, Alistair, Rumble, perhaps the three champions we talk about as being first pickable. Where do you go? If I was I am here, because I'm not really worried about Bengi's Gragas, I would be much more worried about Wolf's Alistair and the way that SK Telecom will de decisively dive around that particular pick. The Cassiopeia uh, up 
still as well. So the question here, I imagine Frozen's going to pick the Cassiopeia in the next round of the draft, uh, just given his champion pool and the fact that it's a relatively safe blind pick. Uh, so I think you probably take, well, you're going to take the Rumble here. I definitely agree with that. And whether you take the Alistair here, I think that's probably a good pickup as well. So you get Rumble Alistair. You may let them have the Cassiopeia as a result. Cassiopeia Sivir might be good here for IM. And then is it time for the Hoon to bring, bring his competitive debut on Victor? We know he's been practicing it. I was looking at the builds, gone for the Lich Bane like Faker, then had another game that was just Abyssal CDR. So definitely experimenting with the meta champion and the meta items on that champion. You have to feel like that's probably going to loom as the mid lane matchup, but you're never quite sure with Easy Hoon. No, you're not. And Frozen also a notable Victor player, and that has been a relatively safe blind pick as well, so that's another way. But I think you take the Cassiopeia here, and I think you take the Sivir too, and just try and deny that as much as possible. There's no reason to take the Thresh right now, but they're going to grab it. It's interesting to see the early priori prioritization on Thresh. With Annie banned out, it's another pick or engage support the Wolf's been playing, but he's already got the Alistair, so... Yeah, they've already given away an engaged support and they choose to pick up the Thresh early rotation. Easy Hoon's at least flashing the Varus. It makes sense to some degree. He's good at the wave clear champions, but maybe this is the Easy Hoon special. Beat a champion and then show him how to play it. Well, this will be his competitive debut on that Varus. Obviously, Faker has had some very good Varus games, so a lot of talk between those guys. I'm sure they've shared a lot of information about how to play that champion. Rek'Sai probably just going to be the name of the game again for... Bengi here is comfort champ in the last several months, that's for sure. Corky Veris could be going for a big mid-game siege with that Rumble right now. They have insane dive pressure, too, with that Alistair and his ultimate. This is a very strong composition, but I think you're going to save that Veris for last. Make sure that you're going to be A-OK -okay on that champion. Yeah, they don't have a lot of backline threats. I think IM will be considering some sort of hyper carry coming through from Raw. He's flashing the Draven and Twitch. I think that's the kind of identity of champion they need to go for. They have Cassiopeia, who can theoretically fight next to and be kind of a peel source. They have both the engage and disengage that Thresh and Gragas can provide. Lucian will be a much more safe pick, but we're waiting to see what they lock in for both AD carry and the top position. I mean, Vayne is a really good pick here as well, honestly. If you pick Vayne Hecarim, you're going to be pretty comfortable with that Gragas, uh, making sure those targets are isolated for, for Vayne and Cassiopeia. Now, whether they want to lane Vayne, given how hard they lost in the early game last time, is the question. So the decision going through IM right now is, do we take the Vayne, which Roar has been pretty decent on, or... Do we take the Lucian, try and dominate the lane and play for that late game or at least try and make more of a run at it? And that's going to be the choice. I think it's smart that SKT haven't committed to a mid laner because what they pick really influences what mid laner you can go for. If they choose, if they'd locked in the Varus, suddenly you choose that lane pressure and you try and emulate SKT's playstyle and start trying to commit to keeping away the blue buff counter jungling in that situation. Now you're flexible to go for a different identity here if you're SKT, and we're waiting to see where Easy Hoon wants to go. You have to think Varus or Victor Loom as the pick here. Even Vlad is fine here, honestly. Uh, you're still going to be able to dive with that champion, and Easy Hoon, that is a comfort pick for him. I do agree that the Varus or the Victor are going to be better. I feel like Vlad, without a backline dive buddy, you could argue Alistair, but Alistair. sometimes hard to pull off, I think. I think it's risky if you go for the Vlad. It does feel kiteable in this particular scenario. You could even just use the Gragas to bounce and Wayne. He will lock in the Varus. Competitive debut for Easy Hoon on Varus. Yeah, this is right up his alley, though, in terms of champions. He's been playing a lot of these long range casters for so long, and it's hardly a surprise. And he's been doing well with a lot of tier champions in this meta, also. So the Varus pickup, SK Telecom, sort of all in right now. On that early game, they've got great dive potential, lots of crowd control. This is a really nice composition, and SKT just going to try and hit that same timing they did last game and overwhelm IM. IM going to be much more item dependent with that Hecarim in the top lane. They're going to need some time, and I honestly think it's up to Roar and Ignar to really win this 2v2 lane or they're going to be in trouble. I think to buy time for Apple, who will find a lot of success diving the backline in the late game. There's very
very low peel. Alistair probably going to be needing to use his CC for some semblance of engage, so the peel's not really there. Apple has taken over a game on Teleport Ignite Ekrim and shut down a 5-0-0 Jinx previously this season, so he has shown an aptitude to do it. Pulling it off against SKT, a bigger ask. Yeah, definitely. I just don't think that Apple's going to have the time to really take over this game right now. We'll see how well Tuzin can contain Bengi. And mid lane should be pretty farm oriented. Tier champions down there. So a lot of it's going to be the action in the side lanes. Roar and Ignar looking to overpower. Let's see if they can have a stronger early game. If they can punish Bang in that weak early game that he has on Corky. Or whether SKT is just going to sweep through in the mid game and take it once again. Very lively audience here today. Yeah, full voice. It is notably super early here by Korean standards for an esports event. Only about 1 p.m. at this present time. Don't have my watch on me, but started at 12 and we're into game two after a 30 minute game. So I'll do the math. Who wears watches these days, Bob Smithy? Yeah, we use phones. Let's be real. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason to have a watch is to show off your $20,000 Rolex. Sometimes I'm, I, I'm not quite esports rich enough for that yet, Papa. Najin finds a use for a watch as well. <laughs> well, debatable, sir. Very they debatable. They find a use. I'm not saying that they need a watch. I'm saying they have a watch, and they've been doing some winning. Oh, boy. One day we'll see Peanut again. One day he will emerge from his chrysalis as a fully formed jungler, a beautiful, beautiful butterfly. Hopefully not a moth. No, that would be bad. <laughs> Something akin to the Monarch Cogmo skin is what you're saying. <laughs> That'd be good. I'd like that. Also Tank, also just uh, in his in his chrysalis right now as well, biding his time in solo queue. Is there a champion that comes into the meta that re instantly screams Tank? Is there something that might actually spur on his re-debut? <laughs> I don't know, actually. I mean, he's, he's known as a very good Twisted Fate player. Some success on Zareth as well. We're going to see Easy Hoon on the Varus this time after completely dominating a Varus last game. Will IM try and play the same, put the same priority in denying blue buff? Because that seemed to be a really successful strategy for SKT. Well, it'll be interesting to see if they actually have that pressure. Of course, once that Rumble gets the ultimate, you're in a situation where if both top laners teleport, the Rumble's going to have huge advantage early compared to the Hecarim. So it may be a riskier proposition to invade that blue this time around. Uh, Alistair, also that major, major early game threat, can really turn fights on his head. So two ganking junglers, Gragas and Rek'Sai locked in. I guess one thing we should talk about, Apple takes Ignite on the Hecarim, so perhaps there is some merit in ganking early for the Hecarim. He does have a displacement, he has Ignite that might be relevant in an early trade. Rumble always has that penchant to overextend when he's trying to push and harass with the Flame Spitter. Usually you kind of want to leave the Hecarim on an island, as speaking of islands, Tucson and Bengi right on top of each other in the jungle, and no one responding from the mid lane just yet. Uh, Bengi level three right there, though. Tucson tries for the turnaround explosive cast, but not, or uh, body slam rather, not going to find a roar with a little bit of an exhaust problem down here. Has to flash the pull. It's a nice trade, exhaust for a flash on the AD carry. You'll be happy to see that if you're SK Telecom. Bengi looking for the immediate re-engage, but good defensive ward from Ignar and has to move away. Pretty quiet after that attempt on the Varus in the mid lane, parried by Bengi's jungle pathing. Bengi now taking a look at this Cassiopeia, pretty full HP right now. But sees that the minion wave is going to push in, so he's looking for that small spot to get on top of Frozen. Of course, quite brittle in the mid lane is the Cassiopeia, doesn't have the hugest health pull, but the harass is the thing you remember if you're the enemy mid lane. All right, counter jungling coming through right as those raptors spawn again. You can see Marin there with a the ward. That has been one of Marin's biggest flaws is knowing when he's about to get ganked in that top side. Instead gets the trinket ward down this game. It's an encouraging sign. The top laner, he does have a tendency on Rumble to pointlessly die. He'll give a first blood. 
Well, there's a point to it. He wants to be aggressive. He wants to try and dominate lane, but needlessly, perhaps, is the, <laughs> the word I would use. Well, okay, fair enough. Usually he has that ward off cooldown in his inventory and just neglects to walk into the river to place it. He'll have a great time to place it when he comes back from base with his big shop. <laughs> his big shop and his nice green ward that he has to buy. Well, okay. I'm actually controlling the wave quite well on bottom lane. He's going to slowly push towards. I'm not going to deny really any CS away from Bang. They must know that uh, Tucson's on that side of the jungle, so accordingly, playing very defensively in bot, a Bang and Wolf. Yeah, Marin actually choosing for... Oh, just going to stick around right there. Does hit that level 5, so not actually going to be going back yet. Just very little threat right there, especially with Bengi top already. But the change of summoner spell does open up more aggression and options for Apple. And again, for IM, you can play around the Ignite and gank the lane. You don't have to rely on Apple to kind of sort things out himself, leave lane when he needs to to pick up jungle camps with the smite. With the Ignite, an option to gank for him. And again, more early burst damage. It's probably going to be the Trinity Force Rush as well, because you don't need to fit in the Cinder Hulk into the build. Yeah, arm guard first, actually, for Marin. So being very respectful of this Hecarim. And here we go, Marin. Coming up with the Chilling Smite already down, misses the Harpoon, but Apple is dead, 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 barbecued. I don't know, I wouldn't like some barbecued horse, I don't think. Oh, I mean, look, he's he's pretty fabulous, the uh, robot unicorn, Hecarim. Maybe he's not quite as tough as a traditional horse, maybe there is that meaty center you can get to, but maybe, maybe in general you're right. I don't mind horse meat. Barbecued horse, though, probably not. You know, last time I was in Japan, I had raw horse meat, it was delicious. Delicious, you say? It was very good. Okay. <laughs> Will that be horse tartare? Yeah, horse tartare. I do like steak tartare. I like raw beef a lot. Which seems pretty common here in Korea. I'd already had it a couple of times despite <laughs> only being here a few weeks. Yeah, it's pretty good stuff. Raw meat is the best. That's how you eat it. Yeah, it's we the, safe, the safe cuts right there, you know. We're being disrespectful. Alistair was on the screen. Maybe we should be <laughs> lower our voice a bit when we're no. talking about prime beef. Oh, wow. Beggy just coming in right there, just ignoring Tucson. Has to go over the wall. Awkward engage. Looks like he didn't expect Tucson to be there. Late reaction. Uh, will Frozen pay for this? No. Easy Hoon. Not willing to commit. Rumble coming down from the top lane, though. Everybody's starting to collapse right now. Wolf zoning out Ignar, and that's going to be SKT arriving in the mid lane first. Yeah, nine members of the 10 actually responding to mid lane. Only Hecarim decided that top lane farm was that much more important. Yes, TP. And not so imp impactful in the early game anyway, so probably just did the sums and thought minion's more important. Wow, so a little bit interesting right there. Bengi looks like he looked like he was caught unaware by the immobile Gragas in that situation, not seeing Gragas in that brush. So, no harm, no foul though, just uh, Cleanse popped by Frozen while Easy Hoon hit him with the Chain of Corruption. And still relatively slow early game here. A whole lot of edge. Bengi going to look for a lane gank, and he's going to get seen immediately. Trinket Ward down in the brush. Yeah, Flash is up on Wolf, so they were thinking about the Flash engage as Bengi parked into bottom. But smart little Trinket Ward predicts that particular aggression. When you're talking about early power spikes, with the pickaxe picked up, you know, a few more combat st stats for easy soon. Still, the base damages from Cassiopeia means she's probably still going to win trades. It's interesting. They have a lot of early pressure from the jungle. Rumble definitely has the advantage over Hecarim and early. I'd say there's a slight early game skirmishing advantage coming through to SKT, but tears abound in mid lane. Yeah, and now the question is, can they set up on this lane pressure and actually move for the dragon. They really want to get it now while this rumble is strong comparatively to this Hecarim. Frozen's going to get caught out. Equalizer down already. There's the Hail of Arrows. Frozen just gets autoed one last time. Auto comes in at a weird angle after Frozen's flash right there, but Easy Hoon just shoots sideways and picks up the kill. He didn't cancel the auto attack, of course, with the flash movement spell. Would have got the kill with that last poison. Tucson flashes in. There's the engage from Hecker and picks up the kill, but he does not have any combat stats, so lucky to get out his apple, but all in all, a one for one. Yeah, nice little turnaround right there. That's actually going to prevent the dragon from going down, surprisingly, so good play from Apple and Tucson to clean up on that Kill right there. They're going to come back around on Tucson, though, overheating Marin with the auto attacks. That is a dead fat man. So Bengi and Marin 
looking to make a play on this blue buff right now, just being a little tricky. And they didn't have to respond up in the top side with no immediate wave pressure. It looked like it was going to be a replay of game one. Once again, Blue Buff was trying to be monopolized. One a bit of Heather Pulvers into Roy. He's falling super low. Doesn't look like Bangs going to be able to get the auto attack, though. They hook him in. Wolf doesn't take a turret shot, though. He's actually aggroing onto the minions. Both of them super low. We're waiting to see if Bang wants to get crazy aggressive with the Flash Phosphorus Bomb, but for now. He's not going to do it. They don't have any items yet. Neither AD carry is actually recalled at this point. So committing to a big play right there with such low damage, uh, probably not going to be the best idea in the world. So there's not really a great follow-up right there besides perhaps denying some CS and forcing Roar and Ignar back out of lane right now. Bengi with the dive, though. Marin wants it. Marin's equalizer is up right now. It just came up, but they're not going to go for it. But with the smooth moves, the red buff, and the equalizer, as you mentioned, it's great communication. Once again, the head buff. Oh, is there enough damage? Flash is used this time, but the answer is no. I really think that was worth it right there. They got a flash out of Ignar, but Bang with the flash sword had no mana and just not enough damage to finish that kill off. So a little bit overly aggressive. We'll see if SK Telecom can get some good damage down on the turret or whether their play is just going to be a recall. Looks like that will be it. And I accept your skepticism about when I first threatened the Flash, just because if Bengi was on the same side of the map, maybe you parlay aggression into a dragon. But Bengi has spent this whole time both looking to turret dive the apple, uh, looking to turret dive apple, and now picking up the red buff. There's no neutral Holy to pick up. Holy cow! As uh, this is something Marin's done before, he's committed to a Medjai. <laughs> oh. The disrespect is real. The disrespect is real. No, but like seriously real. Yeah, arm guard into Magi's is what a crazy snowball build. Now, they could definitely make it work the way they've been playing tonight, the lead they already have, and the fact that they're going to be hitting their power spike pretty soon. So this is not necessarily bad. It's just risky. I know how you feel about snowball picks and snowball items. This wolf finds and face checks a lot of damage. Ignaz caught by three members. Hasn't fallen just yet but will die now with Rumble teleporting in. Wow, that explosive cast getting Wolf right into position to continue the CC. There you go, Rocket will be the finisher on that one, and Apple still getting a lot of Phosphorus Bombs frozen, trying to tank right here, but everyone just piling in, not afraid to go all the way to the base wall. Wolf with the combo, can they finish? Frozen so low, and that'll be it. Bang on auto will be the final Attack right there, Marin just starting to get a lot of stacks on that Medjai's, nine already. Sitting on nine, picked up a kill credit and a couple of assists. The flat AP amount, 181, is crazy for a Rumble. Is still building his core items. Bang, face checks, raw. They're in a really even duel, but opens up space and backs away. Yeah, Ignar there, and they may go for this. That would have been a lantern too far. Nope, death sentence looks like Wolf too low to follow up on much of anything at all, but that is just a great skirmish from SKT. But honestly, a lot of that was Tucson's poor barrel placement and the fact that he actually drove the Alistair deeper into the fight to secure more kills. I was actually trying to work out why it looked like he was scurrying towards the background, but it was just the helping hand of Gragas. With the extra AP that you don't normally account for for Rumble, the one thing you can say Marin can do is actually push these waves much better than the standard Rumble can do. Yeah, I'm not sure. How much will see that be a factor? I mean, Apple still just sitting on Merc Treads. There's a play from Ignar. Misses the death sentence after the play. Okay, well, I am wants to get some level of control over this dragon. Grabs the crab. Faris comes back from base. Mana Moon and Brutalizer. So the pokes are definitely going to be hitting. Doesn't have a blue buff yet, though. So that's probably a factor. It looks like one riding on both Bang and Bengi after the previous skirmishes. Yeah, in terms of combat stats up top, 303 Marin, even though he's gone for the snowball, just has so much more than the Hecarim can deal with, at least at the moment. Yeah, picking up a kill and two assists in that last fight for his Magi, so he's already doing very well with that item. And Apple just has to watch his turret melt in front of him. Apple just gets chunked out right there while SKT goes for this intelligent equalizer because he doesn't want Apple TPing in on this with TP advantage. He's going to do it anyway. He's going to get some damage onto Apple. He's going to come in at half health, watching the dragon to see if there is going to be an engage. They're going to put everything onto doing the dragon, but it resets and gets healthy again. Oh, the poke. 
Rumble takes the turret from the back line. Chains of Corruption misses. Easy Hoon's going to get aggressed onto. He's going to die to start. No, he flashes back. It's about half health. Tucson is a bit, it's still very, very low. The Dragon's actually still alive throughout this whole fight. It's finally secured by Lucian, though. They pick it up and two kills. So big trade coming through for I am. Yeah, they're not done yet, though. Bang looks like he still wants to fight. There's a heal to catch up onto Wolf, and there's the orb. Wolf will get poisoned. Wolf will die as well on a rather awkward re-engage before Marin can walk all the way across the map. Marin right there. Now, they got greedy. They wanted to do that dragon, and Marin thought he had the answer, even though they didn't have TB advantage, which was just to put the damage down onto Apple and force him to come in at 50% HP, but Easy Hoon was just not in position right there. He was trying to poke from the outside and got caught on the flank instead. And three kills and a dragon in exchange for just one turret coming through. Fair SKT as Marin took down the top turret as Apple teleported down. They're actually chasing on to Marin. This Marin has no equalizer. No equalizer. Has flash available. There's no ultimate from Hecarim. Just not the CC to actually be able to impact and push the uh, rumble towards the, the sun, the Cassiopeia. Yeah, backing off right now, SKT. Looks like they want to play it a little bit more passively after that disastrous dragon fight. Saw them fall behind. Man, and that was really quite cocky this early in the game to make that play. And they were really punished by Incredible Miracle, even though Apple did have some issues. Ignar and Tucson here on the top side right now. Apple can't get a great devastating charge down. There's a flash to prompt this. No real turnaround. Marin just defensively equalizer ing. <laughs> The flash for flash trade between the Thresh and the Rumble will probably suit I am in that particular situation. All this turret damage, though, is very awkward. You never want Varus to be able to take down that outer turret early because it just means you'll ward up and then rain arrows from out of vision. Bengi's looking to steal blue. There's still multiple members of I am closing in. Has that tunnel, though, through the thick part of the wall and a real follow up. And they're going to lose a mid lane turret for this blue buff, though. It's hanging by a thread as it was. So, Mate, Is that PTSD from the previous game where Frozen never got <laughs> to pick up a blue buff? Then you overcommit for blue, and SKT punishes you for turrets. Maybe that's giving them too much credit, but that's what can evolve in series. You don't forget what happened in game one, and those points that you focus on the previous game, if you'd set up defenses around them, something else has to give across the map. Uh, that turret was so low, though, I think it was Kind of a lost cause in the first place, but yeah, that is true. I am really being very defensive about those blue buffs this game. You can also tell, look at the number of wards on that blue buff side. Just two pink wards, and I think that says a lot as well. Having two pink wards around a blue buff this early on into a game is quite unusual. SKT have picked up two turrets, though. Uh, a dragon and blue buff control for two turrets. Probably going to give it to SKT in the, in the early game, but... Uh, at least I am reacting to what happened in the last game and trying to open up spaces for themselves to do well. The chip damage in bottom has come through from Trinity Force Corky. Are they going to look to get the three out of turrets? It seems like that's what SKT are going to focus on in the first 20 minutes. Well, why not? They have TP advantage right now. It's their time to shine if I am, com you know, really wants to commit to taking this turret and defending it right here. They have that freedom to get into the enemy jungle as well with how many towers are already down, especially that mid lane. So let's see what they do right here. Rumble needs to start looking for the teleports now. SKT really want to fight in a choke with the high AP. Now both magic penetration items completed as well. The equalizer at level 12 is a massive proposition. If they cannot correctly get away from it, if we're talking about three ticks on multiple members, it should be an easy fight for SKT. This Hecarim with the phage too, just not gonna be that impactful. Marin also with a huge CS lead. It's been the story, 44 CS in top, 20 CS in mid lane, even a slight advantage in the bot lane. Jungle pressure's probably been the big factor that's opened that up and just smart teleport plays from SKT. Yeah, more reserved, more passive than I think they need to be right now. They can definitely play into the enemy jungle, but they are just slowly pushing forward after that last dragon and quite in their favor. I guess the question is, what are they looking for in terms of timings? Because they just opened up time for Apple to pick up teleport as well. So there will be mirror teleports if we do see a big engage. They finally get a minion wave and pressure around bottom. So this should be, without having to invest a teleport, the three outer turrets down for SKT. Well, they lost that timing anyway. 
think they definitely had an opportunity to dive, or at least to continue to ward up the enemy jungle, and they really neither did either. They committed just to a very slow, slow push into the bottom side turret. They did get it in the end, and they do increase their gold lead to 5k. But this rumble needs to be used right now. He is the big, big carry on this team at the moment. And they're buying time for Apple to slowly become relevant. We mentioned during Champion Select, excellent backline uh, damage threat is the Hecarim, especially with Trinity Force against both Easy Hoon and Bang. Okay, Bang has a very big uh, reposition in the, the Valkyrie, but Easy Hoon can be assassinated. Even with the cleanse, we're talking about big burst damage coming through from the Trinity Force. If the next fight is at a Trinity Force power spike from Hecarim, there's a fight that IM wins against this SKT lineup. Yeah, the positioning for the Varus, you have to be so careful against the explosive cask as well. All right. Everyone's starting to collect 15 seconds until this next dragon. SKT with the presence at the moment, taking out all of the wards that IM has placed. And I think this is where you give this one up, although Hecarim is recalling right now. Let's see how big an item he can pick up. It needs to be the completed Trinity Force, I think, to justify. I was going to ask you, do you give it up? It seems like that's the smart move when you've already picked up a dragon for yourself. I think you have to watch your power spikes. You have to, you have to give this up. All he got was a Brawler's Glove right there, and he's, oh, he's thinking about what he wants to do in this situation, if he wants that Home Guard teleport or not. Look, I am buying time, i.e. poking around the dragon is a good thing. It's committing to the fight that I think is the big issue. The more time they buy for Apple, the happier they will be. If this game rolls around to 35 minutes with a similar uh, lead for SKT, it's not ideal for IM, but they have team fights and windows they can take. But it looks like they're going to commit. There's the teleport from Apple. And there's the pickup, actually. Easy Hoon with the finisher onto the dragon. Apple charging in, but he gets turned around immediately by the headbutt. Wolf going to pop. His ultimate, and they isolate Tucson on the side. Varen has to flash over the wall. Easy Hood still with the poke after the Chain of Corruption, which immobilizes Roar during the culling. Hook lands on the Hoon, but Bang with the Valk over the side to get the poke down. So nobody actually dying in that engagement. But Varen not having to use the port either. Bengi gets knocked around by the explosive cast. More and more poke from the piercing arrows. Another flash forced by Incredible Miracle. In terms of relevant summoners, Marin did not have to use teleports. There is a potential teleport window in the next, what, four, four and a half minutes where you can really get something done if you're Marin. So I think that's the most critical summoner that needs to be discussed when we're talking about this particular dragon. Remember, teleport was channeled from Apple after dragon was already down for SKT. So they invested a big global teleport for just a bit of poking around dragon. And here we go, Apple gets knocked up, has to ult out, will he live? Looks like the petrifying gaze will save them, but it will not save the blue buff. Unfortunately, Frozen denied yet another one. And whenever SKT look to do those invades, whether it's fighting over the enemy blue buff, whether it's skirmishing, they have to always remember, Myron has this teleport. He was the one on the other side of the map. They engage a fight. We're globally desperate, where only Myron will be able to respond. So they would always outnumber IM. They choose to focus once again on the blue. And you can see, even with all those defensive wards, they're preyed upon. Banky's low, and his teleport, his, his uh, back was cancelled. Nice pickup from Apple, but lazy recall from Bengi. Very lazy indeed. And that ignite, securing that kill, Marin has to pop the equalizer just to save the tier one. Clear out the minion wave. Well, dodging between death sentences. Roar's going to get it anyway and escape with a nice little lantern play from Ignar. No Apple. aggression than I expected, Ooh. but yeah. Apple getting free time. Doesn't have the Trinity Force yet, but with the Sheen, still going to be a dead turn. And look at Tuzin's positioning as well. Cutting off any possible reinforcement, playing very safe right now so they can just continue to secure objectives. Now they're pulling within 3K gold of SKT. Knocking down some of the standing gold that was separating the two teams. Another turret, and we're going to start getting really evened up. They're going to look for this engage on tomorrow, and he's already fallen low. Doesn't have that many combat stats. Remember, he used his snowball gold onto a Magi. Doesn't fall, though. Keeps the sacks up, and Wolf is here. Wolf is here. Marin, no equalizer. There's the piercing arrow from the side. Chain of Corruption will miss as a flash from Tucson gets him out of range well. Marin so low right there, very dangerous. No equalizer, no flash, walking into that lane. But that was actually really good patience from Tucson. 
made Marin think that he was safe in that scenario and then ambushed him. So SKT not with the wards they need and not thinking ahead as to where this jungler could be on the map. And look, playing around team fights where Marin can just mop up assists and stack up their Magi's is probably smart from LZIM. If he'd used that 1400 gold on finishing the Zonyas, what, five, six minutes earlier, picking up maybe a giant spell into Rylai's, it would have been so much harder to skirmish against this Rumble, but he's gone for that greedy build, and there are ways to deal with it. So it's good to see I am recognizing that and playing around it. Yeah, playing to that top side of the map, just trying to shut him down, but they have yet to do it. That one kill on Namarin remains elusive. And with that Zonia's, it's going to be even harder to get now. Yeah, Flash probably going to be available for the next fight as well. About 25% left on that cooldown. Not been that much kills, I mean, there's a lot in the early game, but the last two fights ended up with no one dying as Raw once again getting cute trying to do turret damage. He's doing a good job though, he actually is turning on the heat. Easy Hoon just dying straight up at the blue buff. They just didn't expect this sort of aggression around blue buffs. They were the ones monopolizing blues in game one with SKT. This time, IM plays, uh, plays into their playbook and steals away both the kill and that blue. Well, SKT got the wards up onto their top side after the gank onto Marin, but they totally neglected that bottom side. And again, SKT not playing with a lot of respect, face checking the jungle repeatedly right here. And I am getting the picks, and now they're back within 2.5. Yeah, the positioning from SKT twice from Easy Hoon, once when poking around the dragon when Apple teleported down, now just walking into an unwilled bush. Will we see an engage? Wolf activates the ultimate. Yep, just getting bounced around by Tucson right there. They want to keep the pressure onto this lane, and that was quite a bit used right there for not really any stall time whatsoever. Apple just face-checking the Raptor brush. I mean, they knew Corky was in the mid lane. That was a bit odd. Rumble was in vision. Rumble actually two levels ahead. That's the explosive cast. He was Bengi's low. He's fine. So we're not seeing the decisive engage. Chief Key coming in right there. Wool. And there's the elimination onto Roar as they find him. Frozen gets caught out front. And there's another couple of kills for Corky as the teleport was not respected. And Roar got way too far forward. Wolf just bouncing him around. Two damage dealers are down for Iron there in full retreat. But Marin and Easy Hoon, there's no options left for Tucson. Uh, there's the poke. Tucson going to dodge the piercing arrow, but Marin still with that scrap shield. It's level 16 to level 11, Gragas. Yeah, this is not going to end well. Bang here to ensure that it indeed does not. Bye. Marin definitely did not want to give that kill credit over to Corky. He's gone for the uh, snowball option, 12 stacks. Look, it's paid off. Uh, it definitely has paid off for the moment. And likely will continue to. Especially as this dragon is now live. And SKT has the positioning on it. They have all the wards around it right now. The only thing I am can see is the enemy jungle. And Apple just going to be chased around in circles right now. Tries to deal some damage to this rumble. Scrap Shield will get him out. He knows Ignar's there. Awkward. Yeah, we're waiting to there's enough damage. The CC should be enough. Marin, those stacks are going to go. But he overheats with the flame spitter. Nice moving away. 12 stacks become six, and a big shutdown for Hecarim gets him a lot of much-needed experience as well. Yeah, big gold gain, big experience gain. He is two levels down, but that is huge. And, you know, I am. They committed to the top side. They wanted to take out Marin. They gave up the Dragon for it. They knew what they were doing. So, objectively, SKT comes ahead, but that is a tough pill to swallow right there for Marin, who had spent so much of this game trying to get those stacks for his use and to snowball out of the mid game. And just to visualize what is lost for Marin, of course, going down from 12 to six stacks, we're talking about 48 AP. That's 950, almost a thousand gold worth of AP lost for Marin. So suddenly he goes back, he picks up an amp turn. That's not even enough to arrest what he lost from that engage. Well, he got a Leandri as well. Easier to just face checking the blue buff again, and that's going to be the end of him. Apple with the TP coming through. Tucson with the with the kill, but that's it. I mean, Marin here on the side as well. Now he's going to push forward. He's going to face check this brush. Can't fight on the equalizer, though. They're moving away. They use the explosive cuts to get him off from the equalizer. It's going to be another kill for IM. SKT's positioning. Benki's hit by the death sentence. 
as you have Flash, he does, so he could potentially go away. Flash is away defensively. Only really Hecarim doing damage of these three, but that's two really nice picks for IM. And they get the blue buff onto Frozen as well, but why would you keep face checking this side of the jungle is the question from SK Telecom. They've now died three times in bottom side, two from Easy Hoon, one from Marin now, and those stacks are just dwindling for Marin. That item is no longer even gold efficient. No, it's actually incredibly not gold efficient. I believe 24 AP plus the 20 in the build, so 48 AP for 1400 gold. Is a ripoff. The shopkeeper got one over on in this game. <laughs> I think Baran got one over on himself, just given his play, which was so tight early on. And he has been targeted from LZIM, but that glass kill in particular was a freebie. So the Bay the Rune King used on Apple, should be able to just gallop away on the Hecarim, even had ultimate if things got particularly hairy. Apple getting these kills is so important because he was in a rough spot. He was laning against a 12 stack Magi's Rumble building into armor. He had a Glacial Shroud at the time, now finished the Frozen Heart. If he gets that third purchase, the Spirit Visage we have to expect before the next fight or the decisive fight comes in, those are two more items than he realistic should have had, given how ahead Marin was in the early game. And Muramana was actually just completed right now after 30 minutes, so even later than Frozen's was in the last match. But when you die at blue buff, yeah, twice. We, yes, exactly. Apparently he can't stack so good. Also, no cooldown boots yet either, so he hasn't been able to... The Bloodthirst is very early though, like yep. he's committed and it's a very defensive choice. Probably gonna need it, as you mentioned, the Explosive Cast and the Terrify are two great ways to split the double AD threat. They don't have a lot of peel either. We did not foresee a game where at 30 minutes things were even, and suddenly we're talking about comps where IM have a lot of options to disrupt SKT. Yeah, they do. Still a siege advantage for SKT, but... The ease of engage as Bang eats a hook. Definitely there for LZIM. As long as Apple can pull it off, that peel really non-existent. That's probably one of the reasons why Easy Hoon has picked it up. Uh, Apple coming around for the side. They may have caught Marin again. Marin getting a lot of damage now with the Equalizer. There's the Cully coming in. Wolf going to get in there. He's going to block a hook and then use his ultimate. Apple a little low. Apple, oh, going to get the disengage. Nice explosive cast from Tucson. Tucson super little. Will he die with the headbutt pole? If you have to think the answer is yes. Finally falls. He was the hero, the explosive casting out of the Valkyrie as the poke is still very powerful from Varus. And SKT going to wrap up a tier two turret with the help of Marin's teleport now. How much are they going to go for right here? It looks like they want to retreat over to the Baron, start to clear this out. Maybe they can force something with the jungler down. They're just going to start doing the Baron, actually. Scrying orb not available from Raw. He's not even in the area to do it, so they're going to try and burn it down. Oh, they have the Leandres up from Rumble. There's no real way to contest with Gragas dead, and it's a free Baron for SK Telecom. It's a really good call from SKT. Only that one person down, but they clear the, the area extremely quickly. And given that a lot of people were chunked out from the Equalizer earlier, they're actually able to get it absolutely for free and then transition straight into a Dragon after what it was seen. Yeah, and Bengi's gone super aggressive. His home guards actually let him get really deep vision and they're both going to be cleared, so no validity to that particular clear. Though, though the Dragon hasn't respawned, it's up in 40 seconds. So they're just trying to get as much vision as possible. Do you ever opt into a dragon fight against a barren up SKT for just dragon number no. three for SKT? <laughs> no. No, you would not, sir. That is what I say. We've seen stranger things. Samsung don't listen to that call very often. <laughs> it's true. Well, that is one of the main factors that separates them from being a top tier team. Thank you for pointing that out. We'll see them in our next series, perhaps making some adaptations to their plans of team fighting with uh, top lane Rek'Sai and opting into Baron fights for second Baron. Just, second I, dragon, I just sorry. want more Bard. Luna's playing today, so that's what I'm hoping for, Baba. The Bard dream is real. We still haven't seen a sweet Bard, but uh, we'll, we'll accept the Luna Bard. Still the best Bard player I've seen so far has been Luna. Just on an individual level, and okay, Dragon pulled out of the pit. Lots of wards already collected in the back for I am. Now Wolf gonna look to run, and there we go. Nice steal from Tucson. Good hook from Ignar, because Wolf was looking to punt the Gragas back over the wall when he was coming for body slam. So by tying him up, 
They got the combo down and a good steal. And to demonstrate how big that was, Cassiopeia and Lucian were both top lane. They weren't looking to fight at all. It was steal or just give away a free kill on the Grugs. They pick it up, get out as well. And suddenly, if they need this fifth dragon as a win condition, it's looking very, very late for SKT. Uh, that was just great understanding of what Wolf was trying to do. Uh, the toast of cast kind of just lackadaisically thrown out. That's maybe apt, given how Gragas usually throws out that ability. So, yeah, it's wasted in this thing. It's just one of their main disruptions is gone. And look at that poke on to Roy. Just one Q, and he's at half health. It's the Wrath Elixir, though, so maybe he can life seal just a hair. But no, that poke dealing about 50% of Frozen's HP, and this looks like it may be a little bit tough to hold on to. They need another minion wave. There it is. And SKT marching forward inexorably to this inhibitor destruction right now. Death Sentence not going to catch anybody. And when the poke lands, even the engaged hope of Apple, who we mentioned, has great options to get into the back line of SKT. Just doesn't mean a lot when both your threats are chunked out to half health with one spell. Yeah, it's looking pretty good for SK Telecom now. It got a little bit hairy there for a while, but that poke now from Easy Hood. Just disgusting. In form. Also has the Hex Drinker just in case that Cassiopeia or that Gragas managed to land too much on him right there. Finally, the pressure is relieved as SKT back away. They got gold to spend. Marin's probably just. Feeling a bit sheepish about how many Magi stacks he has. It was over 10, and now <laughs> he's got three. He's got three. Doesn't feel good. Not worth. 12 to 3. Not the kill score this game. It's actually all even at 11 to 11. Dragons as well, but SKT got so much done with that Baron. Both their assertiveness in picking up Barons when they know that there's such a low risk of steal, and in that case with the Gragas dead, almost 0% chance to steal. Remember, it's an Ignite Hecarim, not a Smite Hecarim. And then they just get the most out of the Barons. We've seen teams struggle to break Tier 2 turrets. SKT with Baron routinely break the base. It's, they really do just maximize some of the edges given to them. And in this game right there, turning that one kill into a Tier 2, and then the Baron right afterwards shows their decisiveness and their knowledge of what the limits are. They just adapt so well on the fly, depending on who has summoners, who's chunked out on the enemy team, where and how they can make plays. Their calls, except for some individual face-checking this game, have been quite good, and that did extend the game pretty significantly. Martin's first death, forgivable, because his team was taking a dragon while he was doing it. That's definitely something you can do to accelerate the pace and maybe take some more towers while everyone is committing to that top side just for a single kill. But beyond that, SKT looking strong. Yeah, I guess the only issues I'd level at this SKT lineup is just a lot of the individual misplays have been from Easy Hoon. Is that because he hasn't had an extended run with the team this season? I guess we don't really know the answer, but routinely, twice in fact in a row, caught out at blue, walking into areas where they don't have any ward control. Unnecessary mistakes, unforced mistakes if you're a tennis fan. Will we see, will he see much game time? It's one thing to play against IM, Samsung, and Spenu, but he has not been tried whatsoever against the top five. Yeah, well, I think part of it too is that Faker's form this season has been pretty spectacular so far. And Faker really on track right now, if he can keep this form up to one of the best seasons of League of Legends by any player ever. Just given his statistics, given the way that he's been able to absolutely take over games in this league. And to me, that's the notable thing. It's not just him playing good against worse opposition. He single-handedly won a difficult game against CJ with that victor performance, where he just he shrugged off all the other lanes, put on the hard yards for himself, and pulled it off. That's what's really made this season notable for him, is that he's in the best team, but he's also winning games off his own bat. Yeah, exactly. That hard carry status, well, as we watch this wave slowly move forward, they're going to catch Tucson on the side, but not much gained right there. Here comes the dive. Wolf, the knock up on Ignar as the tower goes down. Pretty mediocre equalizer. Easy for them to move away, but the poke is still so, so strong. Easy Hoon, despite being caught out, despite his negative KDA, is still hitting for massive damage on that Varus, and he's had the blue buff relative, uh, regularly this game been able to rein in poke in SKT. The full court press with the minions in bottom. Here comes the engage. TP going down on the flank. Hail of Arrow is going to slow down Apple just a little bit. That'll cut some of his damage. 
now the kite. Big Hecarimult. Going to knock Bang and Easy Un around, but he doesn't have any more tricks up his sleeve. Meanwhile, Marin on the backside absolutely roasting Roar. Bang still going to get out after Frozen finds his way back there in an explosive cask. Tries to get that kill. Marin still quite low. Is able to back off with that scrap shield. There's a knockup. Apple trying for one last desperate attempt, and it works. He takes out Easy Hoon with the horse helicopter. And the Apple finally does his job. He takes out both backline threats. Marin did a similar thing. He took out Raw himself. But hecarim has got to that point where even with disengage, even though he couldn't really charge up the devastating charge, there was such a short distance between the ward and the target he got on top of. Tangled up both Easy Hoon and Bang and a very even fight between the two teams. Yeah, they have to be very worried about these super minions at their Nexus turrets right now. They still have that inhibitor advantage for the moment. SKT needs to take a look at this Baron and see what they can get. Marin at least makes his Magi's gold efficient again. How many stacks is that? that six. Six, that's the that's gold efficiency, right? Yep. Is that correct at 1,400 gold, though? Yes, because it starts, it used to not be gold efficient until five stacks, mm -hmm. and then they changed it so that at five, it was automatically gold efficient when it came out, starting at five stacks. But it's definitely not very efficient, obviously. Is it slot efficient even, I guess, is the question that it's 1,400 gold and it's sitting on just about mathematically, but he's not at six items yet, so doesn't even have to consider selling it. This would be the third dragon. The second one was skillfully stolen away by IM last time around. It seems like SKT taking extra uh, precautions this time. Well, they actually did it pretty safely last time. It was just a nice play by Ignar and Tucson. Good teamwork right there. Gonna try for it again. Tucson in the pit. Explosive cast, can he get it? And the answer is yes, he can. But Equalizer finds Ignar. Ignar definitely gonna die for this. And now you have to ask, was it worth it? Because that is going to be a free Baron. And Apple never got the angle to get an engage. Still has the ultimate available, the Onslaught Shadows couldn't be used. He's actually going to be face-checked by multiple people here, but has to back away. They do not want to give up Baron, but once again, Baron spawns, they have no smite. 3v5 doesn't really sound like a great option, but what else can IM do? Well, Apple also just doesn't have the TP for the big engage right here to go back to base and try and make something of it. He has to be worried about Rumble's poke, and Bengi just going to go ahead and tank this one out. Finally, Easy Hoon and Bang start piling the damage on. And that's going to be them giving it up. So I am right there really over committing for that dragon and trading a dragon for two deaths and a baron. Not something you want to do unless it's number five. Yeah, not even number four, not even a six minute time. We're still talking about 12 minutes, 53 minutes if there was going to be that triumphant fifth dragon for I am. They're going to need another massive play from Apple with the teleport when the siege inevitably comes once again with the Baron buff minions. And any mistake, if Apple cannot tie up and kill both Easy Hoon and Bang, this game will be over and SKT will take a 2-0 victory. Marin's just so huge right now as well. That's one of the major problems we see him. It's like selling his Medjai's finally. It did have 11 stacks there in the end. And he sides in Abyssal Scepter's a better buy. I agree with you, Marin. You think so? <laughs> I do. That's just 20 stacks, as you mentioned. This is not slot efficient. That's why he's able to sell it by something much more slot efficient. Banky's getting cute, and there's a lot of people here. Well, he's trying to split push with that Baron, but Banky just gets caught out on the side. But as we say that, everyone from SKT is in that mid lane. Just Apple left to defend, so how dearly will they pay for it? Inhibitor turret down. Inhibitor going to fall as well, so that is well worth it for SK Telecom. They don't even get some sort of a team fight that might bring them back. Although the app is going to hold in. He's going to take out Easy Hoon. At least he's going to lose a lot of his attention. This time he's not tanky enough. Tucson is going to die as well. Easy Hoon's only available for max range poke, but 3v5 or 3v4 is again the scenario for LZIM. And now, as a result of that engagement, they're going to lose another inhibitor man up for SK Telecom. That's it. Taking it out. Iron takes a lot of damage though. He's gonna fall. Frozen does trade his life as well, and Bang is so, so powerful. Gonna Valkyrie in, 700 damage crit. Takes him out, although the reverse kill comes through from Raw. Raw's gonna ensure the game doesn't end now, but the base in Tadders and all of this for an overcommittal. He has to worry about getting within headbutt pulls range and then getting that turned around because Easy Hoon and Wolf could easily kill him. IM's late game decision making has kind of been one of their demons this season, and sending four members to deal with 
the split push from Rexai just doesn't seem like it's playing the map very intelligently. No, that's really desperation too, because even after Bengi comes back up, that Void Rush is going to put him right back into the mix. And the worrying thing is that if he had one defensive ward to give him advanced notions, just ult somewhere else on the map, ult towards the other five and keep pushing. So they got lucky, he didn't have any vision whatsoever. I guess he didn't even have tremor sensors on because he was caught by four members. They got the kill they wanted, but lost the base. Marin keeps selling his Sork shoes with home guards and then rebuying them, and now he's finally, at long last, decided that it's Merc Treads that he wants. Instead, wants to reduce that CC just a little bit. This is a rare thing, Monte Cristo, but the most CS on the team is actually Rumble at 383 CS. Not in the well, game, I was about to say that. In this case, Raw has all the gold, and I guess he's been split pushing a lot, but I think it's a sign of the fact he just had that extra gold, that extra AP to actually push waves at a regular clip on Rumble. Bang, you're getting hooked. No follow up. Part of that, though, is that Marin, uh, he's like top five in terms of GPM in this league. So he routinely does very well above pretty much every other, I think, mid and AD except for Faker and OQ. And that's why the unique thing about what you're saying is that he's a top laner in the top five GPM. Almost never the story, usually having to deal with scraps. Or lane swaps. Or lane yeah. swaps, absolutely. And so look, the, that still happens for Marin. Yeah, and that's absolutely crazy that in the current meta he can have some, That is a Zerat portal. Okay. <laughs> well, okay. It's the first time we've seen that in competitive play. Has it been used? It, yeah, it's used right here. There it is. Look at the siege coming through from the Zerat portal. There's not really much of one, although there's a flank coming through from Apple. He's going to actually tie up Bang, get him to half health, equalizer, splits up the threats. Frozen in the backline, taking a lot of damage. Oh my, Marin. see another person fall. Marin Sonia's right there was very well placed to create the zone. Benki flashing forward right now. He's going to try and clean up this fight. Easy Hood with the flash forward as well. Wants to get the Hail of Arrows down, lands it on Tucson. Tucson barely escapes right there, but Roar trying to dash to the side. Doesn't end up making it. Bang finishes him off, and now Apple's back. Desperately trying to, to get some kills and defend his nexus. And look, with the low health bars once again, might stave off the end of the game, but with this teleport from Marin, maybe not. Well, Marin still getting chunked very heavily by Frozen. Gonna try and turn it around right now. Marin gets the overheat. Bang picks up the kill, and now SKT has just a naked nexus to deal with. Apple exhausted. I don't know if he's going to be able to kill anybody right here. Really Apple actually things does, are happening. It does take out. Maybe three people, no. Ooh. Dies in the end. Bang with the finisher. Has that Trinity Force onto the Nexus. So SKT nowhere near as clean as game one, but they still take the 2-0. Yeah, some puzzling mid-game decisions. The Medjai's rush was a bit cute for Marin. The, the play around Vision, specifically Easy Hoon, walking into blue buff and dying twice was questionable. But in the end, playing it smart is SKT. LCIM, I think they have a lot to take from these two games. I don't think they played poorly. Their drafts were fine, but beaten by a better team on the day. Yeah, and it's, again, we come down to that coordination from IM. They just don't have that same level of shot calling in the late game. And while SK Telecom can really just squeeze every drop out of a mistake, IM cannot punish to the same degree. And the shot calling, as you mentioned, sending four members against a Baron buff team to pick up the wreck side. They got the kill, but uh, certainly not worth one.